this bear pleaded with him to open the coffin, which shocked him. This is just one example of how animals can mourn humans. This sad bear stayed with Carl's family as it sought to fulfill its owner's last wishes and provide them with a loving home. This man said the bear was everything to him. Animals not only provide comfort to people in times of death, they even help them when they are depressed and wandering. Dogs know when people are dying or sad because they cue through body language. Only they can detect scents in other ways that are not yet known. Experts say that historically, wild animals expressed grief by making growling noises. They would roam aimlessly and reorganize their groups. Social relationships between humans and animals are complex. They are close to each other and develop around a family system. Friendship between humans and animals takes many forms. From mutual respect to purposeless love and devotion. In today's video, we'll tell you the amazing story of a wild animal who has the same feelings as humans and who has shown great courage and devotion. Let's get started. This man came from a small town in Southern California where his parents became the owners of a fairly large piece of land after the fall of communism. At that time, they farmed a small tobacco plant. When Carl was a boy, he still helped out on the farm. In fact, he didn't have any time to himself because the farm was very busy. It was harvest time, and he needed to feed the animals or manage the factory business. Carl's family ran a farm, but he couldn't take it anymore, especially when he heard all the stories from his friends at school. He went to a neighboring town where he had to work while other boys could read and play or watch TV, so he decided that when he grew up he would leave the countryside to study and experience city life. His parents got upset at the news and forbade him to leave and said he had to stay with them and continue to help them. They cited his brother Paul, who dropped out of school at age 16 and worked with them on the farm, as a role model. However, Carl did not intend to stay in the countryside. So he ignored these words. He was upset because he wanted more out of his life. One day, after his family had gone to church, he snuck out and hitchhiked to Chicago. He only left a letter to his family saying he had gone to college, and he didn't even write where he had gone. Although he was quite nervous, the end of town was his school. The place he went to school was the biggest place he had ever seen, so he was happy with his decision. Carl understood that it wasn't going to be easy for him, but he wasn't going to give up and was prepared. When he arrived in Chicago, he knew he had to earn money, and that's actually why he left. He was proud and started asking strangers for some change, knowing he had to earn it and go to college. However, on his second day on the street, he was approached by a man named Charlie, who was surprised that Carl was asking strangers for money when he was so old and energetic, so he asked Carl why he was doing it. When Carl was honest about his plans, the man was so moved that he offered Carl a job and a house. When Carl heard the news, he couldn't believe it and was even moved to tears. He quickly started working and used the money he had saved to rent a studio apartment. Afterwards, he pursued his economic and legal studies. He also worked hard throughout his studies, which didn't stop him from being one of the best students. Carl knew he had no background and understood that he had to work harder than anyone else to have a chance to succeed. Since Carl arrived in Chicago, he met a benefactor. This man recommended him to the head of economic solutions. This man was a young lawyer at the largest business firm and was Charlie's cousin, both talented and funny. He decided to give Carl a chance and that was the beginning of Carl's career. He was very successful during this time. But he didn't keep in touch with his family and didn't even know what to say to them. He was very successful and didn't feel he owed his parents anything. One day, however, a phone call surprised him. When Carl picked up the phone, his brother Paul spoke up. 
It turned out that some of Paul's friends were in Chicago and had seen an ad for the economic solutions company where Carl worked. So he immediately told Paul, who after some thought decided to contact Carl, who gave him the sad news that their mother had died two years earlier. Their father also passed away two days later after their oldest son ran away. For a successful man, this was quite a blow. Although he had been preparing for the situation, after 15 years of no contact with his family and not really knowing his brother, he asked Carl to come to the funeral. Who was a little scared, but agreed. Carl got married and had a child. He decided to go home alone because he was afraid of what would happen afterwards. He didn't want to put his loved one under unnecessary pressure. When he returned home, he saw that the farm had not changed and he could even see signs of what had happened long ago. Virtually everything was just as Carl remembered it, and he was welcomed by Paul, who told Carl what happened after he fled to Chicago. As Carl expected, his parents did not accept it and just thought for a long time that it was only temporary. They thought that when Carl went through difficulties because of his decision, he would return home like a dog. However a few weeks passed and they accepted the reality. His mom was devastated and regretted not even being able to say goodbye to him when she was dying of cancer. After her death, their dad was unable to work, so Paul took on all the responsibility. Their father didn't care about anything but his big pet, which was a bear. That bear saved him from potential death. In the forest, a wounded bear was named by him after his son. After that that bear was like a son to him, and he paid more attention to that bear than Paul, even showing the bear to humans. The bear was very sad since the death of their dad. That night, Carl told Paul about his life and the problems he was facing, after which he drifted off to sleep. When he woke up he was locked in a wooden coffin and felt his father's ashes, which Paul had shown him the day before. He heard muffled voices and strange shouts. And Paul tried to rush the funeral in a strange way, shouting that they had to bury the coffin quickly and that it was not important to follow the usual religious rituals. Everyone was surprised by his behavior and guessed that he was shocked by his father's death. At the time, Carl was in the coffin with his father, but he couldn't move or talk because Paul had given him some medication. As they were about to put the coffin in the grave, he suddenly heard screams and the crash of the coffin falling to the ground. The coffin was knocked open. So he saw the eyes of a bear. However, the bear only wanted something else and started looking in the coffin. When it found nothing, it ran desperately into the forest dragging a rope, while someone tried to catch it. Carl saw several people gathered at the cemetery. But no one knew what was going on. However, one of the people in the group was a policeman and also a relative of Carl and Paul. He decided to explain what had happened, it turned out that Paul resented Carl because he needed to take care of all the household chores. However, this was not the source of the pain, their father's will was. Their father decided to leave half of the farm to Carl, which made Paul angry because he thought he deserved it. When he saw how well Carl was doing in town, he thought it was all a gift from God. Their father did not want the bear to be at the funeral, but the bear sensed that there was something alive in the casket. Thinking it was its beloved master, it tried to open the coffin. However when Carl fell out of the coffin, it fled to the forest in despair. The situation was ridiculous. If Paul had told him about it, he would have given him the farm and would have even bought him a harvester or tractor. He had an independent life in Chicago, a wife and a baby on the way, so he had no intention of staying in his hometown. He had a bad impression of the place and just wanted to leave. Especially after what Paul did, he decided never to come back. He said he would not press any charges against Paul and even told him he could keep the farm. He packed up his things and left. He was actually shocked and happy. 
not even believing such a fairy tale experience. What a brave animal that was, daring to come to the rescue of its owner. They had a common name, so perhaps this might be fate. There are many debates about whether animals have the ability to express grief. Studies in evolutionary biology, cognitive biology and social neuroscience say they favor the view that many animals have rich and deep emotions. People with companion or service animals strongly believe that animals can express many emotions, such as fear, anger, shame, excitement, and sadness. Historically, wild animals have been known to express sadness by making howls, wandering aimlessly and reorganizing their groups. Humans and animals have a complex social bond, they are close to each other and develop around a family system. Animals see humans as part of their group. This bond provides safety and security for family members and their pets as well as protection for humans.